Is our skin saying more about us than we want it to? And how has cosmetic surgery grown? A lot of skin resurfacing, microdermabrasion, chemical peels, injectables. You can go back to work the same day. You're gonna get older every day. Just live with it. It's gonna happen. Stop fighting it. A pseudoscientific experiment tests how people react to Alice when her skin is soft and supple and when it's blotchy and bumpy. Excuse me. I think I have something on my face. Got black grease, like all this oh, really? Is it pretty bad? Do you think you can get it for me? Judy wants smooth, tight skin, not wrinkles. She considers whether laser resurfacing is right for her. I like to look nice. I like to feel good. And I think when you look good, you feel better. When I'm looking in the mirror right now, I'm thinking, I can't stand looking at these lines on my face. in the eye of the beholder, and trends come and go. But despite variations, healthy-looking skin is universally perceived as attractive. It's associated with youth, fertility, health, and fitness. Clear, smooth skin is always in. Which means being known as pizza face will never help you get a date, not even in Italy. What do these people do to improve the appearance of their skin? I always wear makeup to improve the appearance of my skin as much as I can without it looking too overly made up. I wear so much makeup for work that the best feeling in the world is to be able to go down the street with confidence wearing not a stitch of makeup. I like the full-fledged makeup, the foundation, the blush, the, the works really on a regular basis. So how much do they spend for beauty? To be honest with you, I probably spend no more than $100, $200 a year on skincare, even as a model. My regular routine would probably cost me 300 every, I don't know, four, four months, something like that. Well, I definitely spend a lot, more than I should. I do actually use a lot of special creams. I spend a lot of money on moisturizers. I really like to be moist. Psychotherapist Rebecca Rosenblatt speaks of the obsession with flawless skin. Evolutionary psychologists state that men prefer women whose physical appearance gives an impression of fertility, smooth, youthful skin being one of the primary indicators, since it signals both health and vitality. As fertility declines, the skin starts to wrinkle. Small wonder many of us strive to make our skin look and feel its best, since we subconsciously learn a lot about each other by its appearance. A pseudoscientific experiment puts it to the test. Is our skin saying more than we think it is? Alice takes her rollerblades and hits the park to find out. Alice gets a smudge of grease on her cheek. She'll ask people passing by for help. Hi, excuse me. I need a little help here. But what she really wants to know is, how close will people get when helping her? Excuse me, sir. Do I have something on my face here? Yeah, it's like you got black grease, like all this. Oh, really? Is it pretty bad? Do you think you can get it for me? I was just uh, trying to fix my skate because the bearing came loose. No, it's not coming off. <laughs> here, wet your thumb and wipe like some spit onto it, and then I'll wipe it with it. Okay. <laughs> Is this making it worse or better? It's it's going away. Is it? Most well, of it's gone. But thanks so much. Okay. <laughs> thanks for your help. Bye. Appearances can be deceiving. Does Judy's appearance reflect how she feels? My appearance is very important to me. I, um, I try to look my best whenever I can. Even when I wake up in the mornings, I still put on a bit of makeup or whatever. When I go out, it's very important to me. I like to look nice, I like to feel good, and I think when you look good, you feel better. When I'm looking in the mirror right now, I'm thinking, I can't stand looking at these lines on my face. It just makes me look older. It makes my eyes make me look tired. I don't think there's anything wrong in trying to improve yourself a little bit and make yourself feel better. And I worry because even when I was in my, my 20s, I worried about aging. And I used to think to myself, oh, I'm not gonna handle this good. I know I'm not gonna handle this good. And I'm not too bad, but there's, there's certain things I, I look in the mirror and I just think, oh, if I could only go back in time and change this. So I think as far as that goes, it, it's gonna give me uh, more confidence, and, and I'm just gonna feel better about myself. 
Is Alice's skin getting positive feedback? She's tracking the reaction. Do you think you could, excuse me, sorry to bother you guys. Do uh -oh. I have something on my face? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a lot. Um, like that you, much? Do you think you could get it for me? Just, yeah. My hands are just a mess. Okay. I think I'm going to make it. There. Good You're good. Call. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> That's great. It's all along here. Stuff. Right here? Yeah. Yeah, just up, up through here. Oh, there. Yeah. And it, it's actually still, yeah, it's right on the bottom. Do you think he could help me take it off? Yeah, yeah. Mom, if I licked my thumb and uh, wiped your face. I wouldn't mind if he did that. <laughs> <laughs> so far, seven people have touched her face. Yeah. Here? It's pretty Am good. I getting it? Yeah, yeah. no, because your hands are dirty. I'm okay. Need another, uh, Spit, tube. okay. Yeah. That's, uh... Oh, that's great. Thanks. These guys with maternal instincts cleaning me up good. To rejuvenate her look, Judy seeks medical advice. She has an appointment with board-certified plastic surgeon, Dr. Tim Sproul. Hey, Judy, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. So, well, what I want to know then is, what is bothering you about your face? Well, these wrinkles, mm -hmm. a little bit of wrinkling here, down around here, like a tightening or something that can be removed. We have a multiple number of different kinds of things we can do to uh, tighten the skin mm -hmm. and resurface the skin. They range from heels all the way up to some more invasive procedures like laser. And from my opinion's perspective, I think that laser is probably the best choice for you. But basically what happens to you is we uh, burn the skin, it then heals. It will give you a permanent um, uh, reduction in the wrinkles that you have. Mm -hmm. But you've also got kind of a lack of fatty tissue. And so I think you'd benefit from having that replaced. That um, involves simply aspirating a little bit of fat out of another part of your body right. and, and very carefully injecting them under the skin in a way that plumps up the skin. The combination really gives you a good result. Okay, that sounds interesting. There are potential risks with this surgery, mm -hmm. like any surgery. Here are two associated with laser resurfacing. Burns and scarring. Burns and scarring can be a risk from the heat of the laser's energy. Color changes. In 30 to 40% of people, especially those with darker skin, the treated area is darker than the surrounding skin. This may fade over time. This is a, a significant um, uh, injury to your face. Right. It's something that is going to look terrible for probably about a week, and then you get that permanent effect. Mm -hmm. so um, maybe bring a veil with me, Dave. <laughs> oh, I think so, I think so. <laughs> Alice begins phase two. Time for the next transformation. Many people touched Alice's flawless skin. Will reaction change with her new look? How much is our skin telling about us? And is it sending the right message? Collectively, we're spending a lot to look good, fueling the $160 billion a year international beauty industry. Yet many of us aren't giving our skin the very basics it needs. Gentle cleansing, sunscreen, drinking plenty of water, eating a balanced diet, and using nutritional supplements when needed. Alice's skin is already clear and line-free, but a makeup artist gave her some extra help. Now, Alice's skin will be made up to look red and bumpy, with an added breakout. How will people react to her now? Do I really have to go out looking like this? Can flawed skin turn them off? I guess hair your wrinkly skin sometimes um, might slightly maybe turn me off a little bit, but I like don't really want to admit it when it happens. So you see it and then you're like, can I, can I block it? Can I not go there? Can I pretend it's not happening? I think spots on, and wrinkles do turn me off. I, I feel like it's a sign that you're decaying. I would find it more of a turnoff to encounter someone who supposedly looked really good, but who turned out inside to be a blithering idiot. Blemishes can ruin anybody's day, mine and I'd say everybody else's for sure.
I do put makeup on my pimples, but some of them are just undefeatable. You know, it's like they've got a mind of their own. No matter how much you take on, they're just, I will survive. <laughs> Yucky skin always turns me off. No matter how great their personality is, you can't really talk to somebody with your eyes closed. <laughs> I think flawed skin, you know, is something that a lot of people worry about. I don't know if it's really a turn off, but that's all in the eye of the beholder. You know, if you're, you can get some skin resurfacing and help that out and that makes you feel better about yourself, then I definitely think it's worth it. In part two of the entertaining social study, Alice's skin has gone totally textured. The makeup artist did a really good job of making me look bad. It's funny. I'm a very confident person, but now, not so much. I'm not sure how people will react when my skin looks bad. Will people still be as helpful? And will they touch her? Many of us change our behavior based on how we feel the other person might think. Is she embarrassed by her skin? Does she not want me to touch it or even look too closely? So I think when Alice's skin is flawed, people will be somewhat hesitant about pointing out the problem. Excuse me, sir. So what is the reaction to Alice's new look? Yeah, you have a bit of uh, black. Black? Yeah, there. Right here? No, it's a bit higher. Higher, here? Down, 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 here? there, yeah. OK. It's a bit of... Big black smear right there. Yeah? Yeah. Does it look pretty bad? Um, it's noticeable. <laughs> Thanks. You've got a little bit of... Uh... Here? Yeah. Like, did you... Are you having an allergic reaction? Here? Yep. You think you can get it for me? What if... Uh, I'd rather not. All right. Nobody wanted to come near my face. If someone were looking the way I look now, I would like to think that I would bite something off their face. It's surgery day for Judy. I'm told it's should be nothing worse than a severe sunburn, so hopefully it won't be too bad. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Is she ready? How far will people go to look the way they feel inside? Laser resurfacing? I used to be the director of the burn unit at Scarborough General Hospital, and we used to look after burns once in a while called barbecue burns. That'd be when someone opened up their propane barbecue and boom, blew off on their face. Then they'd heal, and if they got burned just right, they'd congratulate themselves because they looked 20 years younger. So we always knew this was possible, but that's obviously extremely imprecise. With the laser, we can do this very, very precisely, and we can um, achieve a result that is quite long-lasting and more effective than, say, uh, dermabrasion, microdermabrasion. I think it's the most precise tool we have available to get this kind of result. The results of Alice's pseudoscientific experiment are in. Do you want me to wait? Sure, yeah, that'd be great. Data shows glowing skin Alice, 12 people actually reached out and touched her face. Do you think you can get from my hands are really dirty? Your makeup is fantastic. Beautiful. But how's my skin? Glowing. Glowing, glowing darling. And when her skin was flawed? Uh, I'd rather not. No one touched her face. So how does it look, honestly? Pretty gross. Yeah. As humans, we make a lot of judgments based on skin's appearance without even realizing it. When flaws are apparent, we're not sure how to react and often end up projecting our own discomfort and embarrassment onto those who have them. Beauty may be skin deep, but that skin affects the attraction process more deeply than most of us ever realize. Are they worried about wrinkles? I am worried about wrinkles, um, but I don't think I'm that worried enough to stay out of the sun. I'm always worried about wrinkles. So far, I only have laugh lines, so I'm lucky. Am I worried about wrinkles? I am. Just because I know that at some point, uh, I will lose the battle. It worries me. I may not be able to fight it as well as I'm doing now. 
I should probably be worried about wrinkles, but I'm really not. Wrinkles are signs of expression, so I don't know why everyone in society is so f afraid of having a few of them. Uh, I'm not worried about wrinkles, no. I'm only 23. <laughs> what new anti-aging trend is this industry insider watching? Some of the most interesting developments have been liposculpture. As you age, you lose a lot of volume in your face, and that's what makes you look older and tired. But by taking fat from other parts of your body, you not only get a little bit of liposuction elsewhere, but then they replace that fat into your face so it looks more fuller, you look more youthful and happy. It's surgery day for Judy. Today's it. I'm excited. I'm uh, anxious. I want to have it done and see what, what it's going to look like. I'm not expecting to look. 10 years younger, anything like that. Just just a little bit of reduction in some of the wrinkles and uh, just a more youthful look to my skin, a little bit tighter. So, Judy, you all ready? ready. Any last minute questions? Dr. Sproul draws marking lines to use as guidelines for the surgery. Now, purse your lips. Okay. 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 So, you all ready? I'm good. Um, we'll have you in the OR in a few minutes. Okay. First, the doctor aspirates a small amount of fat from the body and injects it into the areas of the face that need plumping. He then checks the laser. And there's now a hole through that tongue depressor. Next, he goes over the targeted areas with the laser. This will ensure the laser goes deeper in these specific spots. Then the eyes and lips are lasered. And lastly, the entire face gets an even treatment with the laser. Now comes recovery. I thought the surgery went very well. There were no problems at all. In terms of the way the skin looked, uh, I thought everything contracted up really beautifully. So I think that she's got a really good chance of getting the results she wanted. So Judy, how are you feeling? Good. Everything looks fine. You just have a nice snooze here for the next little while. Will Judy be happy with the outcome? Does our skin reflect how we feel inside? External factors can accelerate the aging process. Sun, smoking, gravity, diet, repeated facial expressions like squinting. Even sleeping positions can contribute. Oh, okay, great. Now I have to worry about what position I sleep in. Okay. That is too much. That's too much stress, all right? Let me sleep. Let me live. I sleep upside down. But that actually has more to do with the cost of living in the city. Would they get cosmetic surgery to erase wrinkles? Why not? Seriously. I mean, don't you iron your shirt? Let's iron our faces. Come on. Maybe I'll get into the whole, like, skin product thing more. But uh, I don't see getting cosmetic surgery. I would do cosmetic surgery to erase wrinkles, sunspots, um, whatever I could if I if I could afford it. If I had that extra money to do it, I'm pretty sure I would. I think that there's a lot of other things that I would look at doing as prevention before I went under the knife. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Scary. You never know what the outcome is going to be. <laughs> I would. I've had a few little procedures, lip injections and things like that. I would never consider cosmetic surgery to get rid of wrinkles. We earn our wrinkles. There are expression lines, there are laughter lines, there are memories that are there on your face. With the advanced treatments and things like that that they have today, I think that I could probably get it done and still have a look natural. Or I'd hope anyways. Judy has been recovering for three weeks. It's time for a checkup with the surgeon. Judy, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm fine. You've got still a bit of redness in the areas where I went the deepest, which mm -hmm. is right around the eyes mm -hmm. and right in the sort of glabella region of the forehead. And your lips are still looking a little puffy. That's going to go down probably another 50 to 60 percent. Because I, I was concerned about that. Just, just the above. Like, I like the rest of them, but it just yeah. looked kind of puffy. Or... Yeah, yeah, that's all going to go away. Okay. So it's, it's going to be, I think it's going to look great. Yeah, I'm pleased okay. with it. Super. Yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It's wonderful. My, my eyes feel tight. My skin is very, very soft, and it's more even toned. Um, it's just, it's great. I love it. I feel younger, 
When I look in the mirror, I feel what I feel inside. And I'm just really, really happy with it. I can't believe this. You know how long it takes me to find a pair of And you sound like and a perfect I pair. Feel like five years, so far as I like. And I feel now like I can go outside and I don't need makeup because it's just, it just looks so good. I'm so happy. I wish I'd done it sooner. Yes, this is what I've been looking for. You know, like I've had people say to me, oh, you're gonna turn into a plastic surgery junkie. And you know, most women spend the majority of their lives doing things for other people, for their kids, whatever. And there's a point in your life sometime where you wanna do something for you. So does plastic make perfect when it comes to smooth, flawless skin? Yes, I would do it again. It was all worth it. It's just like, I, I look in the mirror now and it's just like, wow. I love it, I love it.